en el suelo. Questions from the press about direct energy and microwave weapons made them visibly uncomfortable. Secretary, can, can I ask you a question about some of the technology that you're developing to fight the war on terror, specifically directed energy and high-powered microwave technology? Do you, uh, when do you envision that you can weaponize that type of technology? Mm -hmm. Goodness, um, it is. It is in, for the most part, the kinds of things you're talking about are in varying early stages. Do you want to give anything you'd add? I don't think I would add much. I, mm. I, it's, I think they are in early stages and 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 probably not ready uh, for employment at this point. The, the, in, in the normal order of things, when you invest in research and development and begin a developmental project, uh, you don't have any intention or expectations that one would use it. Uh, on the other hand, the real world intervenes from time to time and you reach in there and take something out that is still in a developmental stage and you might use it. So it, the an I, it's not, your question is not answerable. It is. It is. Uh, it depends on what happens in the future and how, how well things move along the track, and whether or not someone feels it's appropriate to reach into a development stage and see if something might be useful, as was the case with the unmanned aerial vehicles. But you sound like you're willing to experiment. With it. I, I think that's the point, and I think, and it's we, we have, I think, from the beginning of this conflict. I think General Franks has been very open to looking at uh, new things if there are new things available, and has been been willing to, to put them into the fight even before they've been fully wrung out and I think that's uh, not referring to these two particular cases of directed energy or, or high powered microwave uh, but, but sure and yes. we'll look at for thousands of years the way in which you've killed someone is you have hit them with a sword, a spear, an arrow, a bullet, a bomb it's kinetic you're killing them by hitting them and now, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you have a completely new physical principle being applied in killing people in which they don't know that they're being killed because their skin and body is being heated by high-power microwaves or they are being shot at by a laser which would have an instantaneous effect. We can see the effects of a gun very easily and understand them. But 
when you cannot see the effects of a weapon because it is not visible and because the science is not very well understood because it's so new then it becomes of grave concern to us and raises the stakes for potential human rights violations and abuses pain is induced upon the people and that's what we have to understand about the active denial system that it exists to create pain and that's very different than most other non-lethal weapons where the desire is to either immobilize someone or make it so that they cannot walk in an area and we have to be very careful because in international law it's very clear that devices created solely for the creation of pain can eventually lead to torture and are therefore illegal People might think that energy weapons only pose a danger for the countries involved in a military conflict, but that's not the case. One particular weapon called the Active Denial System, better known as the Pain Ray, has been built specifically for use in maintaining public order. Given its claim to be non-lethal and the suffering it produces, this weapon could become a very controversial one. The active denial system is a millimeter wave system, operates about 93 gigahertz, sends out a beam for a very long distance. And what's important about it is that when it hits the skin, it penetrates only a very slight, a few millimeters into the skin. And it hits the pain receptors and causes, you know, people to be averse to the pain. It hurts. Hurts a lot. How long can he... The tests that have been run, they were to go to uh, three seconds. Uh, each individual was given a kill switch. Nobody made three seconds. The, the onset of pain is extremely rapid, and you don't have to do it very long. I mean, it, it gets your attention. Good evening from New York. President Obama has reportedly authorized the death penalty for an American citizen who has not been convicted of any crime, the evidence against whom has yet to see the light of day, who denies his guilt, and who has not been given the due process, including trial guaranteed by the Constitution of the United States. It is a power not even claimed by the Bush-Cheney administration, extending far beyond Bush-Cheney claims, which even the most conservative Supreme Court justice rejected. Our fifth story tonight, the New York Times and Washington Post confirming specifics of a story that's been simmering for months now. The White House has authorized U.S. counterterrorism oper operatives to kill Anwar al Awlaki, Muslim cleric and American citizen born in Las Cruces, New Mexico in 1971, even if he is found far away from any combat zone. Unnamed officials say U.S. intelligence shows that al Awlaki, thought to be hiding in Yemen, has shifted from endorsing violence against the U.S. to actually participating in anti-American plots. As part Part of the group Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. Yemen recently freed Al Awlaki from prison for lack of evidence, but he's also been linked to the alleged Christmas Day would be bomber, though the nature of their link remains unclear, and exchanged emails with accused Fort Hood shooter Major Nidal Hassan, though their communications are not believed to be about that attack itself. Also linked to two 9-11 hijackers, and the 9-11 Commission said there was not evidence to prosecute him. U.S. citizens have been killed in previous anti-terror strikes, but a former top Bush legal official told the Times he knew of no instance when Mr. Bush specifically approved a U.S. citizen for targeted killing. All this coming not only as the Associated Press reports that Obama will drop references to specifically Islamic radicalism from his upcoming national security plan as part of an effort to avoid alienating Muslim countries, but also coming in the aftermath of leaked video Video, some viewers might find disturbing of U.S. forces killing what they apparently thought were terrorists in 2007 in Iraq, but were in fact journalists for the Reuters News Service. A spokesman for CENTCOM today telling the Plumline blog that it does not dispute the video's authenticity, but may not be able to find the official copy with which to confirm it. Military officials tonight telling NBC News this case is closed.
There's been a lot of discussion of the Patriot Act, and we're told basically that we wouldn't be able to capture these terrorists if we didn't give up some of our liberties, if we didn't give up some of the Fourth Amendment and allow it to be easier for the police to come into our homes. We were so frightened after 9-11 that we readily gave up these freedoms. We said, well, the Fourth Amendment's not that important. We'll just let the government look at all of our records, and we'll make it easier for the government to look at our records. The question you have to ask, though, is whether or not we would still be able to catch terrorists by using the Fourth Amendment as it was intended and having the protections of the Fourth Amendment. What you have to ask yourself is think about the worst person in your community. Think about someone accused of murder or rape or a pedophile. You think of these people. Do you know what happens if someone's accused of that? Even if it's three in the morning and they want to get their records or they want to go into their house, they call a judge. This is something very important. They get the warrants almost all the time, but it's one step of protection. What you have is the protection where you don't have police officers writing warrants to come into your house. You have to have it reviewed by a judge. What we've done through the Patriot Act is taken away some of the protections of the Fourth Amendment. The Fourth Amendment says you need to name the person and the place to be searched. We've taken away those protections. The Fourth Amendment says that you need to have probable cause. We've taken away those and made it to where it's, if it's relevant or we think they might be related to it. Originally, the FISA court lowered the standards somewhat on the Fourth Amendment, but it recognized that it was lowering the standard and was careful. We had secret courts set up, and the FISA court was the court that dealt with things that had to do with national security or terrorism or intelligence. The information was kept secret, so we didn't let everybody in the world know the name, but the name had to be divulged to the judges. Well, those who argue that you have to have the Patriot Act, or you have to do this, or we will not be able to stop terrorism, they need to explain why the FISA court did tens of thousands of search warrants and never turned any down. In fact, the history before the Patriot Act was no search warrant had ever been turned down. So do we really want to give up our liberties in exchange for more security? Franklin said that those who give up their liberty in exchange for security may end up with neither. Right now, if you have a visa bill that's over $5,000 and you choose to pay for it over the phone, which is a wire transfer, the government is probably looking at your visa bill. They don't have to show probable cause and they don't have to have a judge's warrant. And this does apply to U.S. citizens. Often they'll tell you, oh, it's only foreign terrorists we're looking at. They want you to feel good about allowing this spying. But this spying is going on by the tens of thousands and even by the millions. With regard to these suspicious activity reports, we've done over four million of them in the last ten years. We're now doing over a million a year. These suspicious activity reports, all the trigger is, you don't have to have anything to do with terrorism. The trigger is just that you have over $5,000 that you've transferred by bank account. Now you say, well, the courts have decided that your bank records aren't private. Well, the hell they aren't. They should be private. My visa records, if you look at my visa records, you can tell whether I go to the doctor, what kind of doctor I go to. kind of medication I'm on. You can tell what kind of magazines I read. You can tell what kind